Mrs. Tristan hanging up his parabolic responsible researcher. Oh shoot, can you hear me? Oh no. All right, it's first night. It's probably around 11 o'clock at night. And Tate and a few other people arrived. So I'm by my camp right now. Tristan's right up over here. Not that you can see, but he's up there. So we're just kind of getting settled in tonight. And tomorrow is when all the fun and action starts. So I'm going to go socialize and hang up a audio recorder and see what the night brings. All right, we got the test cam deployed right now. It's July 15th, 12.15 a.m. Now this is so easy to navigate through. I bet you this help amplifies the sound. Yeah, that's actually a really good idea. You're probably wondering why I am hanging these lights up in the forest. I assure you it's not for a rave or anything like that. I've been out bushwhacking off trail, no trail, and everything in between looking for Bigfoot. And I've come to the conclusion that we're not going to go out and find them. I think probably one of the best ways to collect evidence is to bring them to you. And one of the ways that I feel is an interesting way is ambient light. It's a predictable light source that they don't have to worry about being shined in their face. And it's interesting and fun to look at. So hopefully that will pique their interest to come around and check it out. Okay, I got it to work. It's a black and white image though, but yeah, it, it, I can get it to work. Oh, you're going to take us across the creek there? Yeah, are you going to turn your light off though and walk in the dark? Yeah, I mean, I, I could see. I'm down. Get your eyes and just sit here for a minute. Get your eyes and just yeah. No, I don't like doing screams anymore. Yeah. I don't do them. I haven't done them for years. But why's that? Screams. Oh, why is that though? Because I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> That's a good point. That's a good point. <laughs> and uh, I've, I've had them pissed off right here in this camp. I vowed I'd, I'd, I'd never even come back to bumping again. Oh. So. And it was, I think it was because I had the California people up here. I mean, we were, it was just way out of control. I've never so seen anything happen. He said that this thing was nine feet tall, and all of a sudden it was just like down like this and shot off like an arrow oh. like this. And as all he saw was kind of like the brush moving then, you know, it was like, yeah. yeah. And it just yeah, happened right. like that. Just, just split second, he said. It was just like from, from being nine feet tall to almost gone and those long arms man that's what you know like a gorilla yeah something <laughs> they have Running like this forest. ability to lean forward long ways and and 
go low too. Mm -hmm. That's what Jim Henry that talked uh, in some of his drawings, the one that ran right in front of his rig when he was at uh, Hoquiam High School. Oh, okay. You know where Aberdeen and Hoquiam yep. is? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. So right past... I know that. Uh, right past Hoquiam High School. There's, there's a ditch right there, right where the high school is. And it was right past that where this Bigfoot uh -huh. darted across. Whoa. And it was almost like per perpendicular with the road. With the road. You know, his yeah. legs were still touching, but it was leaned way forward. Jeez. And just hauling ass. Yeah. It's funny something so big can have is so fast. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. That's just crazy to think of. Mm-hmm. It's so quiet out here. Yeah, it is. It's nice having this mountain here. Yeah, it's very cool. Helps with the sound. So you were in California when you got the sound? Yeah, that chorus sound that I sent you with the minute one that yeah. was in California. That was terrible. Yep, yep. My, my mom and I, and it was, it was on the 17th, July 17th, 2020. Okay. Yep. Almost the same time of year. Exactly. Yeah. And the funny no. thing is, the, the lake was low at that time, if I remember correctly. So it's interesting that the lake is high now. Right. So I was, wonder, I was wondering if maybe some of them were out on the lake at the time. Maybe oh, others yeah. were, maybe others were at that swamp behind it. Yeah calling too because I don't think they're all in one spot there. I think they're spread out calling to each other. They could have been, yeah. Yeah. And that was at two AM in the morning, just you know, just like that, two AM. Yeah, yeah, just like that. Mm -hmm. That's the thing, they can start at any time. Yeah. Sometimes they go off early, you know, right at dusk. Other times they'll go off at two in the morning. Yep. Sometimes you'll never you won't even hear them, you know, if you're a heavy sleeper. Yeah. Yeah, like last night, I mean, we all went to bed as soon as we got into the tent, so I didn't... Yeah, I was so tired. I wasn't able to hear anything. I was tired, too. <laughs> Are you able to see the stars better tonight? Compared to last night? No, I don't know, it's still kind of a full moon. Back up behind the camp. This is one of the old logging roads. And this gives you access to this rock wall, uh, shell deposit on it. I'm gonna check out and get some video of. Got a big plan tonight. Be about seven to ten people involved, broken up in different areas. Doing different things, trying to get some sort of interaction. It's a good area. Heard some interesting vocals last night, mainly a scream, and heard what sounded like a whoop whoop. You know, it's kind of during the day, so not much activity due to the heat. It's not too bad today, but I'm sure so many local Bigfooters will know this area. They'll be like, oh, I know this path. I walked on it back in the day. We should come back. Seems like a good spot. You know, it just seems like a lot of Bigfooters come here. I bet you if they all shared their data, what they collected. Let me find some good, interesting data points. Something that might be interesting. And this is where they're supposed to be coming down. Right up through here. 
hypothesize, or one of them anyway is coming down. I believe it's possibly a ridge ape in this area. This right here, huh? And somebody should make like a bench out here. This should be like the offering area right here. So hypothetically, Bigfoot's up there. And if you're gonna ask if I'm going to go get him, I'm not. <laughs> Rest cord in his big backpack. Here we are. Four day long expedition. I should think they come down right through here, they said. You can see a path go all the way up there. And you can see what the ground's like, so when you might get like a print here if you're like super lucky, you know, like won the lottery type of luck. So I go right up that line right there. Easy up and down for them. Oh, look, there's a bench out here. Should we think Bigfoot for this bench, folks? Nice one. I like it. I'll take it. All right, so I'm here at Bumping Lake at the rock debris field behind camp. Uh, this is the area where they come in off the mountaintop here. There's a place coming in straight down right through here right up through here and they come in at night and so what we're going to do is just try and make ourselves really interesting tonight to see if uh, see if they want to come check us out but uh, I'm back here by myself it's kind of midday not much really going on kind of hot uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and do uh, just some rock hits or whatever with this rock that I found right here on this bench that I thought would be really cool to have back here and here it is so I'm just going to go ahead and do some rock taps and you know who knows? It's always hit or miss, you know? Usually miss. You know, you don't know what it means um, or anything like that, but it seems a form of communication that they use, so why not try it? I'm, uh, I'm cool with knocks and uh, rock hits like that. I'm not a big fan of call blasting because you don't really know what you're putting out there, you know? Um, like aggressive screams and stuff. But, you know, just cool, chill stuff. I don't know, maybe it works. Who knows? Maybe none of it works. So here we are. Just gonna wait. And then sometimes we'll do, we'll, we'll do night walks, you know, like from here we'll walk down to California camp or something, for instance. Yeah not that far. No, that's a, that's a pretty good hike. Yeah. But the road's so white, too, it's you don't need flashlights. I mean, once you get your night vision, your natural yeah, night really vision nice. adjusted, you can walk on that road for, you know, no problem. Oh, yeah. And we know there's not going to be anybody between us and California camp, so that's good. There is one other couple camps that go off, though, that are cut in there, but there's I saw some fire rings when I was looking for some wood today, but there, there's no one in there. Okay. So, that, yeah, that's good yeah. news. Yeah, it's kind of good to know. I, I like to know, too, when I come up here, I'll often drive just kind of from one end to the other or whatever just to kind of see how many people are in the valley, you know. It's freezing, Ron. Hurry. <laughs> Oh, with the pheromones that you attached uh, to the drone? Yeah. 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 So Jay had this idea to, just that. to hang that. I mean, I've seen this on there. TV, but I've never seen it like live. Oh my God, that's a bear. She so goes through the tree. Look at that shot. Look at that shot. Yo. Dude, what do you think of that? Oh, that's man. Beautiful. Oh, now, is this looking which way? Looking that way. That way. So we're looking back towards. That's back towards Yakima, so. It's looking east, I've basically. Gone, I've gone over the 
the restrictive height. Uh oh. <laughs> Brian, you shot down. Where are you? Like way over there. Yeah, it's like right it. above. I can still see it. I hear it. Yeah, I turn the light on. I turn the light on. Oh, there it is. Oh, okay. Right above us. Wow. <laughs> oh, yeah. So oh, I cool. do see it with the light on. Yeah. That's cool. So, like, what? I mean, if a squatch was like walking, like, just a little ways over, you might be able to pick it up. Has anyone ever picked any up on drones? I think so. Um, one of our buddies, Damon Irons, they have, it's, I forget the name of the drone. It's like a, yeah, it's really cool. It's more, it's like six grand, and it has a thermal camera, a spotlight, and a, like you can talk into the hand, the controller, and it, your voice will be projected through the drone. Oh, wow. <laughs> really? It's for cer- the search and rescue use it. Oh, wow. That's why I didn't it, know wow. that it had that feature, though. <laughs> that's why it had, like, it has, like, yeah, it has the spotlight on it. It has the thermal so you can see people if you're looking for search yeah. and rescue. And I think there is a speaker function on it so you can talk. That's cool. Mm-hmm. Is that thing just up there just flying by itself? Yeah, I'm not just even... Just hanging out? Like, yeah, yeah, I'm just... I'm <laughs> Damn, doing that nothing. Tells so time. it's just, hu- it's just it's hovering in one spot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then he flew can it. you turn it to look different ways? Yes. Or yeah, so I can turn the camera down to look straight down. So that's us down there somewhere? I don't know what to compare it to. No, I'm further that way. Okay. I can, this, the drone's right there. Like, you can barely like see it. Like your right. phone on full blast. So we do up me, here. Oh, so yeah. my height, so like, the how high I am, is 544 like feet. Above the, trees, okay. you can't really the distance I'm away from us cool. is 593 like feet. Yeah. So that's how far um, I am from us. Okay, okay. that way. Yeah. yeah. So it would be at the top of the screen. <laughs> Make it yeah. louder yeah. somehow. And it tells me how fast I'm going, too. So I'm going 25 miles an hour, 30. See, bro. California counts like this right there. Yeah, I'm gonna see if I can make it. Usually, yeah, see, you see my mom. There's the curb in the road right there. It looks like. <laughs> if you had the speaker option, they'll yeah, be funny. That's, yeah, that's, the, that's the band what right up? there. What up, mom? <laughs> yeah, because it does a little a swoop oh, like oh. that, and then it makes a big hard left. California's right here. I'm losing signal, so I gotta mm. come back. Wow. From no. That's I see it, it though. though. Yeah. yeah I you see can that. see it. Wow. And there's the lake. That's a great shot. Yeah. Man. Damn. The lake. Should be able to see Mount Rainier. Nice. That's cool. Very I nice. like that. Yeah. Let me see. I'm going to try and go up as high as I can. And this thing will come back to you? I mean, how does it know? It's Is it, it automatic? It, yeah, back? it does. If the battery's low. It tells me like like you got to get it back when it's low, right? Yeah. And it, it'll like doesn't it automatically come back if it's too low or something? Yeah. And you can take a picture. Uh huh. Right now I'm filming in 4K 30 uh, 30 frames per second. Wow. That's that, awesome. It, You'll be that, able to save this footage. Does that record on the SD card? Yeah, I have an SD card in it, and it saves it to my phone, too. Okay. Well, it saves the pictures. I have to download the video. A little bit of weather up there in the mountains. You can hear the thing. Yeah. Yeah, I hear it. Ooh. Oh, wow, look at that back there. Wow. Back. Hell yeah. Yeah. The light on it? Nice. See, that's Mount Aches right there, I think. Could look, at, look at all that. Yeah, that's Mount Aches. That's the shoulder of Mount Aches. That's like 8,500 mm-hmm. feet. What's that doing? It tells me. So the blue is my flight plat or flight flight path. So I went. I took off and went over this way, and I kind of went around. So I'm using this to help me get back to where we're at. Oh, so you can just set a course like that, and then it's going to automatically... Well, I didn't set a course yet. I just put it here so I know where to go so I can get back to us. So the red line, right now I'm coming back to us. I can hear it. Hear that or a giant mosquito. (laughs) (laughs) Those Asian hornets. Yeah. Yeah, you know, they say this is the technology that's going to find Bigfoot, the drones, you know, because you throw IR cameras and oh, yeah. and all that stuff on there. And, you know, you get the, uh, some of these uh, drones will stay in the air for a good 30 minutes or so. Well, have you heard, I was telling Tristan, have you guys heard of the 
tethered drone. Yeah, I saw that on Expedition Bigfoot, yeah. Yeah, where they can take up a drone and just tether it and leave it up there. It's like a plot watcher almost. Yeah. It's just going to watch over the whole area. And if you put a thermal on it, like you said, now I was even this. thinking maybe you could put audio recorders on them and pick up audio above the That'd trees. Cool. Yeah, well, those uh, tethers are able to be released, too, so they can go... Uh, be released in an oh, instant to go out right. and search to too. Search if yeah, see yeah. So it's like that's like perfect because it's all about having it in the air at Do the they right have time. Those at a consumer level, the tethered ones. Uh, I'm sure you can easily just get some sort of magnetic, um, electric sort of hook with it. You know, as oh. far as our to hook up to the drone. Right. I'm sure it's not too expensive. They want like. 100, 150 feet up, you know. Light type of some kind of yeah, yeah, and yeah. then when it's able, the and then they'll have like some sort of a release, a release option, and it'll just release it, drop the tether down. Uh, hopefully, it doesn't get stuck in a tree, and the drone's good to go for 30 minutes, you know, fully charged right there. And uh, uh, on Expedition Bigfoot, they had like six of them around this whole lake, and uh, you know, we we're talking about rock camp, guys. Wow. Uh. Very nice, cool picture. Were you? Can you send me that picture? Yeah, that'd be awesome, man. I can do it when I get cell service. Yeah, tomorrow. just no, whenever, just even down the road when you got time. It's not not a rush, but that'd be awesome to have. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. You can see all that. Nice. Gosh, dang. See, it'd still be kind of hard to see a squatch, you know. I mean, in the yeah. trees, even all with the drone. Trees. I mean, it's yeah. tough, you know. So you, dense. There she goes. It'd be really cool just to get a shot of it flying through the trees, you know, like in open space, you know. Yeah. I'm not skilled enough like, for that yet. Yeah. <laughs> You're like Return of the Jedi. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. That'd be awesome. Those, the speeders. Yeah, the speeders, yeah. yeah. It'd be yeah, like the, the, the view of the Sasquatch as it's running through the forest. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> really cool. space. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, I got 17 satellites. My signal's good. I'm going to try and get to the top of the mountain. See, this that's goes where back they think they are, you know? Go take a look around the cliff areas there. I could probably do so, yeah. Let me. Yeah, I can't go any higher. I think, like you said, Tristan, or whatever, if I took off from the mountain. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah, that's... Uh, that's still a pretty good, cool vi view, though. You got any kind of zoom feature on that? A little bit. Oh, there Ooh. you go. I might catch something walking up on that shore. Oh, wow, yeah. That like, would be crazy, dude. Oh, yeah. You <laughs> catch something big walking. in transit. Make sure I want to be over camp first. Eagle in the haystack comes to mind right there. Mm -hmm. Damn. Damn. It's amazing you go so far. A human would take you all day to just do what they yeah, did. Yeah. I mean, literally. <laughs> now watch this. You did it in less than two minutes. Oh, look at that. Damn, that is sick. That's the picture it just took? Yeah. And put them all together? Yep. Oh, my God. You see this, Ron? That's pretty sick. As it, it's like the one where you can, <laughs> yeah, can do like the first picture down there. Summit of Mount Aches. Oh, oh well. That's one big lake. That's cool. I don't know if anybody's done pictures like this here. Yeah, probably not. Probably not. Been the first. I mean, how many drones have been up in the air around here? Not many. Like 20. I mean, they are getting more popular. I know you can get them even for 100 bucks, but not probably as good as this one. Yeah, the, they're more expensive, the better ones you want. Yeah, well, it's worth it. I mean, if they're going to do what that thing's doing. Well, wow. You'd totally see, though, like a Bigfoot run out in mm -hmm. front of them if there was a Bigfoot there. Oh, I mean, for sure. I mean, you could definitely see one crossing the road. God, that'd be even a good thing, just follow that road up and down, you know, because that's the best place you're going to see one. There's no trees. It'd be interesting, like, if they came out after, like, someone drove by. All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Wow. That was 
stupid. It's a smart son of a bitch. <laughs> What's up? There's something in there. Walking. You want that? Mm-hmm. Thanks. There you go. Thank you. I'll go in there. Like, yeah, like right in here. Yeah, I'll go in there. I four, like I saw it walk, and I heard four huge steps. Like, yeah, it's good. And it's cracking and everything going through. I thought it was wrong. I thought it was wrong. I thought it was wrong. What's that? Yeah, yeah, let's all fan, like, do a fan. Well, let's just all just walk, walk up through here a little bit. Is that that salt lake? Yeah. Oh, my heart was pounding. Took that spider web for you, Paul. <laughs> oh, that was nasty. So it took the four steps and it got quiet. Yeah, like it just stopped over there. But it, it couldn't have got that far away. No. Unless it's just sneaking like right off. In here, somewhere in here. Could it I, be a deer? I, I saw something go by. Stevie. What? Could it be a deer? It sounded really heavy. Well, like, hey, I check this. It wrong, well, it could though. be an elk too. There's elk in here. Well, yeah. Here's why I'm thinking elk or deer. Right, Salt Lake. Yeah. Yeah. But who says? Bigfoot doesn't like salt every once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> See if there's some tongue licks on there. <laughs> oh, there is. Oh, there's fresh. Feel that. Is that wet? Is it too wet? No. It's kind of dry, but you can definitely see where. Is there a trail camera out here? Basic this. Uh... Yeah, you should look for a trail camera. There could be one on there. Yeah, I wonder. I didn't see one. It's like a hairy version of Where's Waldo. That's what we're looking for. I saw and heard there's something here. Look up in the trees. Everybody look up in the trees too. Or maybe it's just hiding in plain sight right in front of us, huh? It's very possible. It was like right where, you, like where we are right now, basically. Oh, right here is where you saw it? Like right over here. Oh, really? What do you think? A lot of it is pretty, I can move pretty openly back here. You know, I wonder if they can just walk on these like, like tight rope here and just smash, you know, so they don't make any sound. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean if, it, if it is deer or elk, that's a food source in the area. I mean, to be honest, deer, like you'll see and you'll hear them, like deer or elk, but yeah. they can get away pretty quick. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's just like, that was just crazy. Hmm. Welcome to the Bigfoot subject, huh? The ultimate craziness. I was, uh, I, I was four the, You're gonna do a do a tree knock? Yeah. All right. It's the moment I saw that and heard, I pulled out my phone immediately. That's the point. That's the way it is, huh? See, I think one of them cabins is right here. You can see some of the old wood right there, and there's an old bed spring over here. Yeah, that's logging right there. But
Oh, I'll go. I'll go see. Yeah, I'll go see. Leave no man behind. Hey, hey, over here. You good? <laughs> Marco. <laughs> you guys didn't leave me, did you? <laughs> I thought he was following us. There, he was like, he, he yeah, was there started he all there. there. Straight ahead, there he is. Wait, like you see how he's moving? Uh huh. I saw something little look like him. <laughs> I was like, bro. That was the first time I ever heard something like that. It's like monstrous steps. Wouldn't it be spooky if like a Bigfoot just started running after him, like <laughs> 20 steps behind him, like, run, 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 yeah. run, come in. <laughs> no, dude, he's going to get you. Oh. <laughs> Damn, bro, you went real deep back there. Parkour, parkour. <laughs> Forest parkour. Whoa, whoa. Like it was really crunchy. <laughs> like someone was just crashing through the sticks. And then on the fourth step, it stopped. And like you could hear like the trees and stuff, like the, the debris falling down. Like when we're going through, like you could you could hear it going down. So I thought Ron stopped right there. I was like, Ron? And there was nothing. And I kept calling him. And then there was nothing. And then I was and then my heart started going. I was like, <laughs> I don't know what that is. So then I started calling you guys because I didn't want to go after it by myself. Because I don't want to die. Yeah. <laughs> we appreciate that. Yeah. yeah. It reminds me of what I heard in Florida though too. Like the way that crashing sound is, mm -hmm. it was crazy. I think, didn't we hear something like that up in California? We were like walking and we saw a deer. Yeah, it was a deer. Oh. It was like at? on the thermal. Where uh, he caught that. Deer I think it was Elk Valley. It was Elk Valley. Yeah. Oh. And you know how loud that thing was? When yeah, it was like, you guys, yeah, you guys went a different way, but like I had the same thing happen to me. Like, well, when an hour I went before. when I went with you to get the camera. That's right. It? Yeah. And it was like, so this deer is walking through Elk Valley, and it was a tiny thing. But when they, like, hop over these brush piles, they make such the loudest noise you would think it I was. I can't even a, replicate it. No. Hmm. And, like, that's the other thing. It's like, I could, like... I could that's why I'm deducing that deer over. or elk, okay, because walking through that, yeah, it's going to hop like over things, dogs. and when it lands with all its weight it's there, right it it's going to land on stuff and There's make a nothing. loud noise. I don't even see a deer or an elk or anything. I've but, seen an elk go right through stuff though, like silent too, like step right out onto a road. That's didn't the even thing. hear them before, and like they they slithered through it, like hardly making a noise. Yeah, I want like maybe so you startled confused. maybe you startled something because the salt looks right there. Yeah, but but he felt it and it wasn't it wet though. No, it wasn't wet. It was, there was I mean, nothing dry, licking. There was nothing up. licking it. Yeah. So I mean. Maybe it was about to lick it. Yeah, so, maybe so it didn't I, lick it. I went all the way back. Uh, maybe you, maybe you spooked it. You know, you there's spooked whatever it was. I mean, there's a pond. Yeah. You got a picture of it? Yeah. So we've got you got deer, elk, sasquatch. Those are your three viable subjects. I mean, it could gotcha. be one, either one of them. Mm -hmm. Especially in this area. I mean, just just because we know there's a lot of sasquatch in here. Yeah. But they do raid human things, and they like human things and foods. And like but they're they're also yeah, very so generous. Yeah, That's one thing I've noticed about right. Sasquatch. Like when they got into like right Dean's um, chicken years. coop, my good friend that I played in the band with, um, Cabin years. Fever was the name of the band. 1978. He still lives in the cabin on Blue Pass where it happened. Oh wow! And when it got in there, it took five chickens from his from his chicken pen. And they had sh they they had a uh, shotgun with bird shot, and they caught came out and they shot at it because they were freaked out. They didn't know what it was, and the thing just turned around, looked at them, walked off. They ran back in the house to like get more bird shot, get more reload their shotgun because they didn't. They were like freaked out. I mean, he would never shoot at one nowadays, but they were younger back in the days. You know, it was him and his cousin, and they were there. And they just had shotguns, you know, laying around. A lot of people did back, but it was just bird shot, you know, for snakes. It was actually snake shot, what he called snake shot for rattlesnakes, because there was rattlesnakes up there. So they just kept a shotgun handy for in case they encountered a rattlesnake. But when they came back, 
three of this, those chickens, and they were all laid perfectly in a row with their beaks all in the same direction. But when they came back, three of them were gone and two of them were still there. So, you know, and I've noticed that with a lot of reports with Sasquatch. They're not like greedy or will take everything. They'll always leave something, something back on a human type thing like if they raid a farm they might take part of the fish or a freeze from the freezer or whatever they won't take it all it seems that way anyway with a lot of stories that line up that way yeah you know because when you read a lot of stories you look for those little clues and stuff i mean that's how you get to be a good researcher you look for the clues that are consistent with from yeah you know encounter to encounter so. should we try and knock you we're going to try and knock but I don't care. It's, knocks are are human humanish anyway, you know. So doing a knock from now and now it's it's kind of a natural thing. So yeah, I mean, we can either do a wood wood knock or I, this thing will probably break if I hit it with this. It's wet. It's like all sponge. You got your little thing now. It's in my car. It's in your car. Oh. We could go back to camp and just act nonchalant. Yeah. And then just start a fire, play guitar. Yeah. And maybe do a wood knock from there. Yeah. Yeah. You got a little knocker. Yeah. Let's do it. Right. Yeah, he's got a little one. <laughs> <laughs> hey Tristan, I think we're seeing a UFO, oh, man. Let's, let's go get abducted, dude. All right. Yeah. We'll be like first contacts, you know, for the only. Earth species, you know. Well, what's that species from Zoroth or something? Yeah, yeah. yeah man. Let's get abducted to Let's yeah. Zoroth. That's, that's, that's man. sweet. That's good. I like that. Yeah. I want to put a recorder. You should. Yeah. I want to put a recorder out here. Do you want to put a little further up? I get away from camp. Maybe, yeah. So it gets away from the chatter. Yeah. It's still. This stuff I like. Draws attention to an area is kind of weird. Yeah. They might think if it's they might think it's a UFO and if they're ready to be beamed up, beamed up. Yeah, and if there's a UFO connection, well, there you go. For sure. I mean, we don't have to go too far. Yeah, I mean, around the third part right here is even here. good. Yeah. Let's hope we're going to pique the Bigfoot's interest tonight. I feel we should uh, have some rave music going or something. <laughs> is this your Tash Cam? No, this is a. Uh, I put the Tash Cam behind my tent. This is the $500 Sony unit. Oh, wow. <laughs> That has better mics. I'm gonna get this. You need a light. Thank you. I only have two on there. It's, it's not totally secure, but it should be good. Yeah, it's not like it's mics are crazy on this. That yeah, should be good. All right, thanks, dude. Mm -hmm. um, it's probably 9 o'clock. 9.30. Um, we're going to wait till it's open. She's just hanging out right here. Okay, no. Where do I even see one? Take me to your leader. <laughs> that nice thing, something like this, is kind of innocent and... Fine. Yeah, you know? Yeah. Like a Why not come check it out? Yeah, I would. Your light show on this one. Yeah. Together. Maybe I'll bring them in. <laughs> Almost thought there was a UFO over there about ready to land. <laughs> I'm like, guys, guys, it's the big one. Let's do it. last big walk we went on was right after we left Bluff Creek. I've been sitting too much. Sometimes sitting is all that you need to do. Just going to my yep. thighs. 
I spent years out there looking for them, and uh, yeah, it's it's really hard. It's best to try and get them to come in, and and uh, just got to create an environment that they feel comfortable interacting in. So, what do you guys think of Bumping Lake? I like it. I feel like it's too busy, though. It is. Like today was like, geez, man, where's all these people coming from? I mean, this place obviously has the potential. Yeah. Undoubtedly. But they're all at that side of the lake, you know, on the uh, north side of the lake. There was the people coming down through here one way and never leaving. Yeah, I mean, they're, yeah, I mean, I, mean, I, I don't know what's up that road, so maybe there's more camping up that road. I, there has to be, because I see people coming in and they were hardly leaving out. So, I mean. It, it is really busy, uh, potential human contamination, and, uh, but it's, uh, it's also a good spot, too. It's a big bowl that's isolated, and that's if they stay area. down there at the more remote end, that people don't go as much. You know, like that down that Lily Lake Road and stuff. Uh, you know, I don't know. There's, it's just, uh, just as good as any. Yeah, I think Tristan's over there. A little bit overcast, it looks like. Yeah. It came in quick. Some clouds creeping in. I saw him on your drone, kind of brewing up at the other end of the lake there. Oh yeah, I saw that. That should make for a better squatchy night. Yeah. Dark. Yeah. It'd be awesome to wake up in a misty, foggy morning. I don't know. I've kind of, I'm kind of over that misty, foggy morning since Bluff Creek. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was horrible. It was raining for three days. Oh wow. Ooh. So this is your first time to Bumping Lake, you said. Yeah. What do you think of the area? Uh, you know, like you, it's got a lot of potential. Uh, for me, I always like the the remote areas where there's like nobody around. I just feel more comfortable in those areas when big footing. Um, but uh, you At least know, when you have action there, you know for sure it's nobody else. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, like here, it could be drunk people messing with you. Yeah. It could be other big footers because it's just so popular. I mean, the accessibility this place has is why it's so popular. Yeah. Whereas, like Paul was saying in Bluff Creek, it it's so hard to get into there mm -hmm. because it just eats cars up like your tires man yeah but you know uh paul has had a lot of activity here tristan has and, and many other people so maybe the human aspect is I think what that, brings them around too so yeah i think so that's a component yeah it's a double-edged sword in a way it is yeah you, you know you you think you go where they would want to be at but maybe where they want to be at is closer to us because we're so oblivious <laughs> i think so yeah i mean nobody's really out there looking for bigfoot you know no and the jane goodall diane fossey go live out there among them for months on end i mean nobody's really doing that no nobody has the financing or anything the only thing close to that was the tom slick thing in 58 that was about the closest thing from people living out months looking for bigfoot yep. yeah but ever since then, I mean, maybe besides, I guess he's not really looking for Bigfoot, but Les Stroud, he's lived in the bush a year, you know, so. But he, he was. Well, it depends on where you really live. It's your access, too, you know. If you're close, then you're you're always up in the woods, you know. Like where I live, I'm always up in the woods in big, you know, in habitat. Just It's, it's all around me, actually, so. You know, if you if you happen to live in an area, but if you got to drive there, then it's different because then you got to take the time to drive and put a, put something together. You know. Yeah. But if you do live out there, it helps. It really does. It well, sure does. Because then you're you know you're out there more already. And you just, yeah. Yeah, I see that. But you know, everybody has to work still and make money and all that kind of thing. If you had definitely some funding you know to, to say okay just take two years off you're, we're going to do a two-year study and we're just going into the woods yeah you that's know. that's what we need that's what we need yep. right there down in the town they follow mm -hmm. the deer right down into town they make raids mm -hmm. and then they hide in the big trees like that are in people's yards and stuff that's what they use for cover Yeah, I mean, you know, we, we did a lot 
lot of overnight stuff at Elk Valley this year at Bluff Creek, and we kind of we kind of came to an understanding that you know some of these places we might not revisit unless we hear some fresh activity mm -hmm. next year. You know, we I think we're going to take a break from Elk Valley and a break from um, Onion Lake. Laird Meadows. Well, it depends on what you're doing in there with your research. If you know, if you're doing the typical Bigfoot stuff, they're they're they catch on to all that stuff sooner or yeah. later, and they know what you're up to. And they'll just be real quiet. And then it depends on if you know where you're at. If you're in if you're in camp areas or if you're in more wilderness areas, they're going to act different. You know, like in these human rooms here, like where we're at now, we're in a predictable area that. They know what humans do. You know, we're a predictable bunch. We come into these rooms over and over and kind of do the same things. And so that they know that. And that, that's why I think the juveniles come down and fuck with people like when we're in these little camps. Mm -hmm. a, lot of, a lot of sightings and reports from camps, you know. Yeah. People see them getting up at 3 in the morning to go to the bathroom, for instance, and there's one right there in camp, you know. I know they've come into this camp at night, in the middle of the night. Definitely they come in here at night. Like three, four o'clock in the morning. They're here. They've been in this camp many times. What were you guys doing those nights when they were came into camp? Uh, just typical, just being a camper. It's kind of like this yeah. type of stuff. Trying to trying to trying to be as much of a camper as possible and just camp, act normal. Kind of like what we're doing now, you know. Yeah, there's a bunch of different things that I switch it up a lot. Yeah. I, I, like I don't, I'm not big on smoking or anything, but I think that you know, just getting another smell out in the air. Right. You know, a, a scented cigar or something might have, might pique something's curiosity a little bit. Oh, yeah. When you look at those lights and stuff, and I like to put stuff out like that, but then I, you know, it, and then I like to kill it too, you know, and go dark. So if it's intimidating, maybe they'll come closer after we, we put it out. They're just curious about certain folks, you know, they can definitely read people. I think they're curious about certain camps, what we're doing, you know, how we're we act, how what what we're doing. But yeah, there's some crazy good good areas other than this than bumping. I, I hardly come here anymore either over the last couple of years. Yeah, you know, I used to come here a lot, but some of the areas that are closer to my to my house where I've been going for longer than here are just flat crazy, you know, and they're huge, unclothed valleys, you know, and there's no recreation, no campsites, no nothing, and you just got to penetrate in there, and, and they're in there, I mean, and they're really active, they're so active at this one place that it's just, it's, I won't camp there alone anymore, mm -hmm. I mean, I just won't, especially since that lady went missing, it's just like, oh, yeah, <laughs> like right in one of my camps, basically. That's creepy. Yeah. And then for me to see one right there, it's like, okay. No. What the hell's going on here? Yeah. The Bumping Lake Expedition of 2022 was a great example of like-minded investigators coming together to help solve the Bigfoot mystery. Unfortunately, we didn't collect any viable evidence to help prove the Bigfoot's existence but we did collect evidence to show that something is going on there and should probably be looked in further. For me personally, I heard two kid-like whoop whoops, both camps in the middle of the night, heard a loud scream, one that I personally haven't been able to bet out. Tristan and Paul both thought they saw a figure moving around my camp, possibly checking out my lights in the middle of the night. This is a really good area for Bigfoot. There's a lot of habitat and a lot of food and year-round water and a lot of people to observe. I could see why Bigfoot would want to hang out in an area like this.